Today we have a presentation from Ray Jones, Kinetic Mesh. This webinar is one of our regular ongoing series of webinars we usually host at least once a month. All participants, um, everyone participating in the webinar will be muted throughout the webinar. However, you can submit questions via the GoToWebinar console. You, we will address the questions at the end of the presentation, so please, when you think of a question, just submit it that way. We are recording this webinar, so it will be available afterwards for viewing. You will receive a link to the recording um, probably today or tomorrow. I'm now going to hand over the reins of the presentation to my colleague, uh, Tim Yeager, who will do a brief introduction to Alliance and to the topic. Hello, this is Tim Yeager. Um, we are one of Raven's partners, distri distribution partners, and uh, we are happy to host this webinar. Hold on one second, I'm having some technical difficulties. Um, Alliance is a broadband distribution house. Um, we hold we handle manufacturers that do the backhaul and the transportation, both licensed and unlicensed. Um, obviously, Region is our mesh partner, and we also handle all of the infrastructure that goes along with broadband builds and the power that goes along with that as well. Some of the technical services that we offer our partners is we do some micropath, microwave path licensing, some network design with them, some surveying, we do kitting so all the material shows up at site at the same time. And, and we also provide tier one and tier two support as well. So with that, uh, if you have any other uh, questions, here's our YouTube channel. Um, obviously look us up online and some of our social media feeds as well. Or you can reach out to your local alliance uh, account manager. With that, I'd like to uh, turn the control back over to you, Lisa. Thanks. Uh, we're just going to pass things right over to Blake Bartlett, who's going to do an introduction to Ragen. Thanks, Blake. Yeah, you bet, guys. Thanks, Lisa and Tim. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Uh, I will be presenting today. Um, had a bit of te technical difficulties with our original presenter, Charles Bird. Um, so yeah, I will um, be happy to answer any questions at the end of the presentation. Uh, so ultimately, Ragent is, uh, we are delivering a, a high performance, secure, reliable mesh network. Um, and you know, going through the webinar, we will, we will discuss the main points and, um, and really competitive advantage that we have um, over our competitors and really just give you a, uh, an overview of the products and really, again, kind of what sets us apart. And I am the channel director with Ragent, uh, so I'm working hand-in-hand -hand with, with our distributor partners like Alliance and uh, the partners uh, that we're looking to onboard and, and really just grow together. So, again, I strongly encourage if, if you have uh, questions at the end, um, uh, we can certainly reach out to me directly, reach out to um, uh, Tim Yeager, reach out to your, your local salesperson. So um, I will, without, by with that, I'll just go ahead and jump right into it. And again, and, you know, and the main difference and, you know, what is the living network is, is really where we like to focus our attention mainly on, you know, the kinetic mesh network. And being a kinetic mesh, again, I go back to being a secure, reliable, high-performance mobile network. Um, you'll see a couple of buzzwords here being adaptable to the harshest, most rugged environments. We have been, our main um, you know, uh, markets that we've been working in since you know, you know, early you know, 2000 have been really with the federal government uh, adapting to those harsh environments, uh, incredibly rugged, built hardware uh, to work with battalion um, armored vehicles, you know, on-person um, on person radios, dynamic being that these things, the, the radios are moving um, all the time, every single one of our radios. Um, it can be completely mobile. There is no controller node or, or central decision maker. Uh, smart being the self-healing um, 
really just self adapting to everything um, that, that comes up. Um, being the the really most productive high performance, you know, bandwidth intensive um, operations that we run into in the different applications. It's something that um, we have the multiple uh, connections with our radio that is uh, really kind of a, a huge, you know, competitive advantage for us in that um, being that it is so, you know, we run into these very high bandwidth intensive um, you know, operations and, and applications in the mining field uh, per se. Uh, we have, you know, in, in one particular mine, there's roughly 18 different applications running, which causes for a lot of bandwidth. So, um, again, a couple of buzzwords that, that come out there that really describe, you know, where we're you know, setting ourselves apart. Right along. This is really, um, you know, everything that is combined with Ragent. Um, so we've got the breadcrumb. Uh, hardware and the InstaMesh software, and that's really the really a secret sauce to our um, you know to the technology itself. InstaMesh uh, it allows for extremely fast, it, it just extremely fast changes in the environment. So it's always working, um, you know, mo making the multiple connections, and it's a completely distributed protocol. Uh, again, there is no controller or central decision maker of any kind. Um, it, it, it really chooses the, the fastest path uh, for each packet. Um, it's, it makes decisions on a packet-by-packet packet basis, um, which, you know, this, this really kind of allows, again, for the, uh, the, the high density. So if you have a, you know, you're running a, an application on, on passing data on a 2.4 uh, frequency, you run into some interference, it's going to automatically um, and instantaneously reroute to the 5 gig uh, frequency uh, to continue passing that data. Um, so it's it's basically you know based on the RF environment at the time in which the packet needs to be transmitted. That's when the decisions are made with InstaMesh. Uh, enabling the true mobility again, all network nodes can move all the time. Uh, it makes it for for no controller node and no single point of failure. Um, so it can work. Um, you know there can be. Um, you know, really, um, we, we find that, you know, the mobility is something that is a, a real competitive advantage of many applications, uh, but just because we have the mobility doesn't mean that we can't have a fixed node um, just on, you know, you know, just like any other application, but just having the mobility aspect to it really enables us to, to truly offer the, uh, the mobile mesh uh, technology. The scalability is something that, again, it, summing it up very quickly, is that the more nodes you add to the network, the stronger and more dense the network is going to be in general. Making those multiple connections is going to be, um, you know, it, I mean, the more you add to it, the more power you're going to get out of the network is the way to think about the, the scalability. This is a um, description of the InstaMesh. Um, um, really just kind of a, a topology of, you know, a couple of, of nodes in a network. So um, you'll see that, that basically this is offering an in-motion node on E, and it's showing all the different connections with the, you know, 5 gig 4, 9, 2, 4, 900. So again, you run into localized interference over here on the, on the left side on the green running on 2, 4, you're automatically going to be able to, you know, switch and it's the, the nodes are going to instantly switch from 24 to 49 or, or 5 gig or 900 to continue passing that same um, that same packet of data um, you know it's a um, the being that you have the multiple connections and the true you know mobility aspect is really something that again it, it, it it's something we like to really set ourselves apart with because we we truly feel that it you know, being that there is no central controller node or um, no ability for single point of failure, which we'll, we'll get into on the next slide, um, it's something that, you know, you can really run a network um, and operate on a network not worrying about uh, really any, any significant downtime. Okay. 
So as I mentioned, being in the traditional mesh networks, um, you know the, the infrastructure nodes that are that are shown in this uh, particular this particular slide with the, um, the the yellow dots, if you will, that's going to be your traditional mesh network. So each node is going to each uh, mobile node. I'm sorry, in the blue is talking to the controller node, which is then linked back to another infrastructure node, back to another infrastructure node. So if you're looking at this node over here on the right side, the top right corner, it's only talking to these particular nodes here, which is talking back to the infrastructure node. It's talking to this one and over to the switch. So these nodes, the mobile nodes, are never talking to each other. And that's really going to be um, a pretty big difference in, in the way that Ragent communicates is that with the same amount of nodes in the network, it is, um, it's just a much more efficient way uh, of passing the data. So again, this being the, the traditional mesh network, if this node were to go out, every single node in this area is going to go out as well, which is linking back over here. Nothing is going to work in this central area. So if we go over to the next slide. This is more or less the same view of that network, only using uh, the, the kinetic mesh technology and the multiple connections. So you can see that you know if, if one controller node, if, if one node, we'll say this being the controller node right here in the middle, in the top right, is going to be, um, if it were to go out, you would lose these four connections to the outside nodes instead of this whole section going offline. There's a, excuse me, <clears throat> there's actually been um, a deployment in a mine we have in, I believe it was in Salt Lake City, Utah, that is. Um, there was a node that went out for multiple, I mean, I think it was you know, multiple days uh, without really any significant downtime. The, the, the fact that it was, is they didn't even know it was down. It was a power outage, um, and it actually you know, had to go on to our, our software breadcrumb commander to really you know, notice that it was down because there was just no, uh, there, was, there was just no real significant data loss. Um, you know, um, being able to support multiple nodes talking instantaneously and independently of each other, if, as you can see, adding more nodes to this network again is going to get back to the scalability aspect and the high density, um, really just the ability of the network. Uh, the more you add to it, the stronger it's going to be making those multiple connections um, and, and new routes to get the, you know, the data off of the network. This is basically, um, uh, you know, we are a, um, we're able to adapt to, you know, the different networks that you have, uh, or that your customers may have available. We can seamlessly link to, you know, these point-to-point -point networks or cellular networks, and we connect via satellite, fiber, you know, you name it. Um, if it can be, if it can be um, transmitted, um, if data can be sent over Ethernet, it can be sent. Um, it can be meshed. There may be some more questions on, on this one at the end, so please um, feel free to reach out to, to Tim or, or me um, at the end. If I don't know if there is an ability to, to ask questions on the, the go to meeting, but if, if not, just reach out to Tim and, and we can get them answered for you. Please say here, I'm just going to interrupt. Yes, people can submit the questions via the go to webinar console. So. Okay. Go ahead. Thanks. Uh, so this is our, our portfolio ultimately. So you've got the hardware, um, LX5, ME4, and the JR2. We'll dig a little deeper into all of this. Obviously, the breadcrumb commander is the breadcrumb network management software uh, that we have. Our RADS is the remote advanced diagnostic system. So basically, you can run real-time analytics um, on the network that you're running. Uh, and BC API is um, the application programming interface. Um, I believe it is. That's, that's going to be another technical question for um, uh, Charles Bird whenever he gets online. BC API is something that uh, is, is newer to me, um, so I will, I will get with Charles on that and get a better idea uh, of what that is. So let me, let me jump into the, the breadcrumb portfolio. The LX5 is really, the again, the, the infrastructure solution. So if you're really looking for the ability to 
build a high density network, you want to have a strong foundation. Um, the the LX5 really offers that. So up to four transceivers um, and six external antenna ports. So you can have uh, ultimately you know, four different um, four different frequencies on one radio. One of the most popular frequencies and, and, and makeups um, of the radio that we're finding right now is the uh, 2255C. So that is a MIMO 24 and MIMO 5 gig uh, LX4 or LX5, I'm sorry, that is, you know, really, you know, running the network and, and set up. These are typically used as, as a static node, honestly, uh, that, that really allows for the scalability um, and, and high density um, uh, networks to, to be deployed. Uh, again, the highest levels of performance, lowest latency um, and interference management you'll see uh, down on the bottom. More frequencies, more paths, uh, it's just having the multiple transceivers uh, out there. So that being really the, the core infrastructure node in the LX5. The ME4, uh, we call it the workhorse node. Um, it's, you're going to have up to two transceivers, four MIMO uh, external ports. So you can have you know, MIMO 24, MIMO 5 gig. Again, that's, that's really what we're seeing is, is the, um, the most popular makeup. Um, we really, you know, we really um, we push for um, networks to be built and and designed around the LX5 and ME4, just being that they are the most robust solution that we offer. Um, you know, moving over to the JR2, building a network with ME4s and JR2s is certainly it's a more cost-effective way to do things, uh, but it's certainly not the most high density. Uh, and allowing for, you know, the true, um, really just what Ragin is built for and the mobility, the high density, high performance. It's the ME4JR2 network design doesn't allow for that. The JR2 is best to, you know, client access, um, you know, body worn. It's a single transceiver. Um, it's really not something that you want to build a network around. Uh, just to, you know, touch on that just a little bit. So. Um, I'd be happy to send out any spec sheets for these products to dig a little deeper into them. Uh, but again, this is this is our hardware portfolio right here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, this is kind of a key features breakdown of the, of the different radios. So, um, like I said, on the LX5, four transceivers, six external antenna ports, up to 270 megabits per second. Um, 802.11 protocol. We are pretty much, you know, vendor agnostic. So if, if you have, you know, a customer that's got, say, a fluid mesh or, you know, one of our, you know, competitors' networks deployed, we can actually, you don't have to forklift a system or a network to go in and, and introduce Ragent to it. It'll fit, you know, right underneath as, as you know, the layer two client ultimately. Uh, to add the mobility aspect to the radio, and, and maybe that's a good way to, you know, introduce the technology to an underperforming mesh network. Um, we, we've seen that work in the past. It doesn't always work, but it's, you know, something to keep in mind for sure. Um, security, again, we've, <clears throat> we got our start from uh, the federal government, and we are they obviously have some some significant security requirements um, to do business you know with them so we've basically taken all of the different security um, certifications that we had to get with the federal government radios put them into our commercial grade radios and that's what we've got um, in the LX5 and ME4 um, the JR2 has uh, obvious um, um, the same uh, security uh, but it is a um, um, just a much just a much lesser radio. I shouldn't say anything about it. It's it's really got the same uh, security features as well. Um, we are IP IP67 uh, rated, dust tight, waterproof. We've got deployments uh, of down to negative 40 up to 115 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, and um, we've had nodes deployed um, up in you know some of the the coldest environments that have been deployed for many many years that are still up and running with no with no hitches really so it's it's a it's a stout product that's for sure the scalability is is again something to to, to keep in mind it is something um, 
we take a lot of pride in because again it's it's so easy to to add to the density and the robust nature of your network by just adding more nodes to it. Um, you know, so it's something that really you 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 add to it. Again, the self healing adaptability nature uh, of the the InstaMesh software. It is um, it's easy to just add nodes directly to the network because they immediately when they come online they start talking to each other. So it's really quick and easy, honestly. This is some of the, the, the security that I mentioned. Um, NSA Suite B algorithms is, is something we were working for with the, um, uh, the federal government. Uh, configurable per hop, per packet, uh, authentication with the breadcrumbs. So you can literally um, you know, configure the, the, the nodes to have per packet, per hop um, security features um, you know, if you if you if your client required that, if it was you know public safety or you know say if you had a you know a federal opportunity, uh, you can rest assured that the security is as really as robust as it gets. Redcrumb Commander is um, our network management software. Um, it allows for secure, um, you know encrypted link to, the, to, to, to each breadcrumb, so you get a, a full view of, of the entire network. You can log in to um, each node to see the different connections uh, in real time. Um, uh, very easy to use um, and something that is, um, you can literally work with your entire network from Breadcrumb Commander, update the new firmwares remotely uh, that, that come out, you know, really on a we, re we re release multiple firmware updates uh, a year, um, and, and again, you can configure them right from Breadcrumb Commander very, very seamlessly, very easily. Um, Real-time network analysis again is something to, um, you know, something that, that, that we'd love to be able to uh, to offer the customers. This kind of gives you a, a sample view uh, of Breadcrumb Commander. Um, you see the, the different connections, uh, the different peers um, that are, are linked to the particular uh, radios themselves, different MAC addresses. Um, so, you know, it's just kind of, a, again, just a kind of sample view of Breadcrumb Commander. Another view uh, that some people like to do, we call this the, the bullseye view, uh, to where you can, again, see, visually see every link um, that, that comes up in the um, in the network itself. You can click and drag uh, some of the different radios out here to see the different links that are being made. Uh, so again, all this to say is multiple views, uh, multiple tables uh, with Breadcrumb Commander just to customize it the way you want, uh, the way you want to be able to uh, maintain your network. So we are a, uh, a we have global customers, right? We've got a, a lot of, of mining customers um, down in Australia, in Latin America, um, in, in South America, uh, South Africa. Uh, so we are a global company and looking to, you know, grow as, as large as we can with the proper, um, really with the proper partners. My idea of, of the perfect the perfect partners are really it's quality over quantity, guys that that have the the RF knowledge and background. Um, we, 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 we go to this, again, with the expertise and experience to help with you. We would love for the same to be done with our partners. So um, we certainly allow 24-7 uh, customer service. There is a, um, an offering that, that we have. You can, you can purchase it for your customers uh, through you know, your distributor partners. Um, we do site surveys, network management, remote monitoring, uh, on-site engineering, engineering and training. We offer all of that. Uh, but we would love for that to be, you know, the, the partner's responsibility to where you guys can can really do pre, post sale maintenance support and really run and, and work with your customers to the fullest extent. Um, and, and we're just there to help is really the the idea behind it. So um, something that uh, uh, to keep in mind also is is the LX and ME models. They are uh, ones. Um, that have the 12-month warranty with a 48-month extended warranty um, available. As well, um, with the JR2, it only is a 90-day warranty um, because it is not a radio that we manufacture. We actually manufacture the LX and ME models. 
periodic software updates, I, I touched on that with the um, um, uh, just the firmware updates that come out every month or not every month. It can be really just depends. We typically do about eight a year, uh, give or take. I think it was maybe eight or nine in that last year, but uh, nonetheless, uh, multiple updates a year. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, so this is really touching on what we've what we've already discussed. Private wireless networks, which everything can move. Um, it's it's something that again we we truly pride ourselves on for you know, the multiple connections, the truly mobile aspect of the radio. Um, it is really tolerant of you know interference and congestion to have those multiple connections. And and again, if if it's not so much something that is a, a, a huge sales you know, a sales point to your customers to have that mobile aspect to the product. Um, it is just something to keep in mind if there was, if, if you needed to add that down the road. Maybe it's not something immediately, uh, but maybe the, the bigger picture of it is, you know, the mobility is something that, that we do very, very well with the multiple connections, um, talking to, you know, into every node working independently of its own and, and making its own decisions on a packet by packet basis is something that is Again, tested and proven, um, and, and it really is something to keep in mind uh, for the growth and, and really the big picture of a, of a network. Uh, Real-time uh, savings and network management is, is something that is, I'm, I'm thinking particularly of, of oil and gas deployments that we've got. We've, we've really, we've saved a lot of man hours and dollars with um, you know, the real-time management of the network. Uh, to where you, it would used to be well, with the networks that these guys have, they would literally have to go out to a wellhead, pull the data uh, on like an air card, and and put it on a on a jump drive, bring it back to, excuse me, back to headquarters or back to the switch. They can get, take the all the data you know off of that jump drive, and and process it you know over time. It can, it's just it's just a lengthy process, right? So without taking someone you know off of their duty to go pull some you know, data from a, a wellhead, doing it in real time is, is a huge, huge uh, time saver and really competitive advantage um, for, for what we're offering. Uh, high bandwidth secure, low latency, um, that is really what we're all about and being able to do that all at the same time is something that our competitors have, have had a hard time with, right, and we feel like we, uh, we're, we've stepped the bar up, if you will, in, in many regards. Um, yeah, so extreme flexibility, you know, it's really, again, you know, being able to adapt to the, the different environments, to, you know, the changing RF environments, uh, the changes in elevations with some of the, you know, you know moving nodes, if you will, um, and, and really, you know, being able to truly uh, adapt and self-heal in a network to where it's, it's lower maintenance time for uh, the employees and for the end users is, again, a huge competitive advantage. That's it. Um, if there were some questions, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to answer them uh, as best I can. Again, I, I really wish Charles uh, was was able to give the presentation because he would get a little more technical than I would. I'm certainly not the technical voice, uh, but, but I'm happy to, to help in any way that I can and answer all the questions I can. And uh, I don't know if Charles was able to get back on or, or have a, I know it wasn't able to earlier, so I'm not sure if he was now, but. Blake, it's Lisa here. I've been pretty active in the background here chatting with everybody. Um, I don't think Charles's signal is strong enough for him to talk, but we concluded okay. that he'd be able to answer questions by typing if there were anything that we needed him to answer. Got it. And uh, I have actually had a few questions that I asked him to uh, respond to. Okay. Um, I'm not really sure if there's something I should read out. I think um, I'll come back to those, but there are a couple of an unanswered questions. Um, the first one I think is really appropriate for you to answer anyways is um, who are your authorized partners and how do you become authorized? Um, well, our authorized partners are, you know, we work with distributors and kinetic mesh partners, so they'll be our VAR partners ultimately. Um, the best way to uh, become or express interest in, you know, becoming our partner is to go online uh, to reagent.com, uh, apply for partnership, 
and that will send basically complete a form that gives us all the company information, all the pertinent information, uh, the verticals that you work in, um, the size of the company, just kind of gives us an idea of who you are and what you're doing. And then uh, we go from that to, um, I, I will get a notification and reach out to you directly. And our, our different distributor partners uh, being Alliance uh, in the US, Canada, and Mexico, um, and then a number of other distributor partners um, around the globe. We've got a couple in the US, Border States and Tesco, um, and then uh, a number of other guys around the globe. So uh, distributors and, and bar partners are what we're referring to. Okay, great. There are a couple of technical questions. Um, they're not too techy though, I don't think. Um, is the 900 megahertz radio using down converted 2.4 gig? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, then the other question is, does your product work with third-party products such as Cisco management systems? Uh, I don't believe it does, no. And um, another question, when will you incorporate TV white space? Um, it's a good question. I don't know. I'll have to, I would have to get back on that one. Okay, I'll just assign that one to uh, Charles and see if he can answer us. In the meantime, I'll just read out a couple of the questions we did have that Charles answered for me. So, um, sorry, back in the very early, uh, oh, sorry, there was one more question that I forgot. Um, who can we reach out to about specific applications that Regent might fit our needs? I certainly like to be uh, in the know about uh, what's going on, um, but you can reach out to me. You can reach out to the area sales reps. Um, I think the best, you know, I, I think the first approach would be to reach out to me, and I can distribute it uh, appropriately. Okay, thanks. Um, I do have another question. Um, to my knowledge, with traditional mesh networks, the throughput is basically halved with each hop down the line. Has this been overcome, and how is this achieved? And is, is it based on traffic needs? Is that a it has been overcome, and, and it's it's my I believe it has been overcome with the the, the packet by packet um, routing system that, that that we've you know come up with with our InstaMesh. So you don't lose you don't lose a lot of speed and a lot of bandwidth per hop, um, and that is due to our InstaMesh platform. Okay, great, thanks. I also just so, understood. Uh, this is. Uh, sorry, thank you, Lisa. Go ahead. Sorry, did you want to answer a question? Yeah, if I if I may, I would like to add to uh, just that answer uh, which uh, Blake just gave. Uh, so we we work on layer two, and uh, typically a, a breadcrumb would work as a layer two switch. So and since uh, a multi-frequency breadcrumb like a LX5 or an ME4 is receiving and transmitting at the same time, uh, we are not dropping bandwidth every time we go through a hop. Uh, and also the latency numbers are typically one to two milliseconds every time we go through a hop. Okay, thanks, Terry. Oh, that answers the question about latency and dropping. I think there may be a couple of questions that um, um, Tim had. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. Um, Blake, how does the mesh uh, from Regent differ from the Cisco and Moto mesh that are out there right now? It is really, you know, the the, the main difference is again going to be the true, the, the mobile aspect of the product and really the InstaMesh platform. Um, you know, whenever we, you know, whenever we can truly allow the, the true mobility of the product, um, the no single point of failure, no controller node, um, those, those are going to be the, the main factors. Um, and Terry is, you know, you can reach out to this or, or you know, touch on it as well. Um, but the, the instant mesh protocol is is a huge differentiator from us in the competition, as well as the mobility. Um, I do have another question that's kind of building on one of the previous questions. What layer two switch types can can the mesh nodes function with? Cisco. Uh, yes. So uh, as far as 
the uh, working with the other network equipment is concerned, we are pretty much a standard solution. We would work, we would plug into whatever uh, Ethernet uh, network that you have. So we are 802.3 compliant on the wired side. Thanks, Terry. T Tim, did you have any other questions? Yeah, so Blake, is it able to offer a triple play with like voice, video, and data on the same radio? It is, yes. Okay, and then I got one other one. Um, how do you scale a deployment? Um, let's say you start off with like five nodes and you decide that it needs to be a larger deployment. How do you scale it from there? And how big can you scale it to? Really, it's just a simple addition of the nodes. So whenever you fire up uh, one of our nodes, it immediately starts talking to uh, the neighboring node ultimately and you would just configure it through breadcrumb, so breadcrumb commander. It's truly, it's truly just that easy. Okay, Lisa, that is uh, all the questions that I had on my side. That's all you have? Okay, thank you. Um, so I've just assigned through the back end system quite a few questions to Charles and I think rather than just reading them out, um, I'm going to uh, compile the questions and answers and send them out, um, maybe not right away today, but after the webinar so that everybody has a list of the questions and answers that they, if they want to review that. Um, and if you want to submit any questions right now, there's still time, you can send them in to me and uh, of course then we'll follow up immediately after the webinar with uh, our team. Um, I think from my end, that's everything, guys. Uh, just as a reminder, I did record the webinar, um, and someone just asked if the slideshow will be available, and uh, it, it will be. Um, if you do want actually a copy of the presentation, just send me a quick note, an email, and I will send it in PDF to everybody who looks for it. Um, and I will send out a follow-up email that will have an upload uh, link to the uh, video that you can watch, which is actually a recording of the webinar. Um, and uh, look for another one. We'll, we'll be doing another one with Ragen as soon as we can get it scheduled. So thank you to everybody, to our speakers, to uh, everyone who attended, and um, have a great afternoon. Thank you.